G'day viewers, Oram here. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Disk Management Console to initialize disks, convert between GPT and MBR, switch between basic and dynamic disks, and create spanned and mirrored volumes on a Windows 11 computer. So to do all of this, I open Disk Management by right-clicking on the Start and choosing Disk Management. Any uninitialized disk will be displayed as not initialized. Initializing a disk is the process of preparing a drive for use by the operating system. If the disk previously had data on it and you initialize it, the existing partition table will be overwritten. This can make previously stored data files inaccessible and recovering data from a disk that's been subsequently initialized requires special tools. To initialize a disk, right click on it and select initialize disk. You'll need to specify your partition style. MBR, the older format, supports up to two terabyte disks, uses a single boot sector at the disk start and allows up to four primary partitions. GPT supports disks larger than two terabytes, is newer, and may even allow you to have up to 128 partitions. It stores partition data redundantly across disks to make sure that they are more recoverable and reliable. Here, I'm setting disk one to be MBR and disk two to be GPT. You can convert between MBR and GPT without problems on disks under two terabytes in size if there's no data. Things become more complicated if the disks host data. If you're trying to convert the operating system disk from MBR to GPT, use the built-in MBR to GPT command line utility. Ensure that there is at least 20 megabytes of unallocated space on the partition. If you're trying to do it on a non-boot volume, it's far easier just to move the data somewhere else, convert the disk, and then move it back. The most common operation to perform in disk management is creating a new simple volume. By default, a new volume will consume the entire disk, but you can split it up on a disk into multiple volumes, which is something you're more likely to do on a server. A simple volume can only be created on a single disk. You can assign an available drive letter or even configure the volume to be mounted in an existing empty folder. You can format using NTFS or XFAT on all editions of Windows 11. If you have Enterprise Education or Workstation editions, you can use the ReFS file system, which is something you only really need if you have massive data disks and files, and it isn't something that most Windows 11 users will ever need to worry about. Now that the volume's created, I open File Explorer and show the volume present and that you can just use it as normal from the operating system. Now I'm going to delete the volume. Note that doing this will functionally remove all the data. I say functionally because if you've got the right forensic tools and some excellent skills, you'll probably be able to recover data after removing a volume. Next, I'll create a span volume. A span volume is a single volume that runs across multiple disks. You can use it if you need a lot of storage. But if any of the disks that make up the span volume fails, you'll need to go find that excellent data recovery expert. You can create RAID volumes that include software redundancy, but you need more disks than I've got here for that. You can also create a striped volume, which is like a span volume, but where you spray data across multiple physical disks to improve read and write performance. When we go to Explorer, you can see here that the span volume is double the size of the simple volume because I've added two identical disks. I remove the span volume so we can get on with the next demonstration. You can convert from basic to dynamic disk by right clicking on the disks and selecting convert to dynamic disk. A basic disk uses traditional partitions and is simple, compatible and easy to manage, whilst a dynamic disk allows advanced features like spanning, mirroring and RAID. Here I'm converting the disk that hosts the operating system from basic to dynamic. One of the drawbacks of doing this is it locks you into the current boot configuration. So it isn't suitable if you want to have your Windows 11 computer dual boot with another operating system. Next, I'll create a mirrored volume. This volume type provides maximum redundancy, but means that you end up using twice the amount of disk space. Each item written to the primary volume is replicated on the secondary volume. You can see that the volume is the size of one of the disks. To show how all of this works, I create a folder on this mirrored volume. I'm then going to go and break the mirror. Now when I do this, one of the volumes retains the original volume letter. So to show you what a broken mirror looks like, I assign a different drive letter to the other volume. 
Now you can see that each volume of the broken mirror has the same data, just on different volumes. Anyway, that's some very basic disk management stuff on Windows 11 computers. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.